Today on Houston Life, we're heating things up just in time for holiday shopping. The Houston firefighters are back with a special gift, their 2022 calendar, and it's all for a good cause. And speaking of giving back, learn how the nonprofit Operation Warm is helping kids prepare for the winter. Details on how you can help provide new coats and shoes for families in need. And then we're heading to one magical neighborhood in Richmond that's sure to brighten your holiday spirit with a traditional Christmas competition. And how you can experience the second annual Gingerbread Village at City Place in spring. A beautiful holiday themed display the entire your family can enjoy all that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC 2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Houston Life on this Monday, November 29th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Back with y'all. Tex is here. He just stopped to sniff the flowers. And our brand new set transitioned. Not brand new set, but our new set for holiday. Yeah, and a big shout out to Craig Cheeseman, who works behind the scenes here. I understand he came in Saturday and Sunday and spent really long days making all this happen. So, Craig, I want some of your gift wrapping skills in my next life. He does Listen, they're job. legit. Absolutely. And the set looks amazing. We did the same thing over the the weekend we put the tree up only to find that one we have two trees because i won the kids tree okay and then our tree and our, mine with all like my fancy ornaments or whatever mine. no that christmas tree kids that's mine. mine there's no presents or anything underneath that one. it's just purely decoration it's the pretty one. yeah but the other tree the lights do not work oh no were the lights pre-installed yes so you have to go through and cut them off and replace pretty much. them pretty much oh man i'm so sorry disaster my so sister half had the to tree is lit <laughs> well, I know. I mean, that's the bummer about the, the pre-lit trees. If they don't work, then, oh, man. Well, I hope that's sorted out. We ended up putting up my mom's tree for Thanksgiving. And, you know, this was the first time I was back in Salt Lake City to be with my mom for Thanksgiving. I think it's six years. What? Well, because typically you and I were involved in the Holiday right, Light Spectacular, right, right. which airs here. So this year uh, we decided, you know, what? I'm going to go back to Salt Good Lake because it's you. been a minute. And it was so nice to be there. My sister and her husband, Nate, and their family, you know, you, you know all the nieces. They've been here on Houston life. So it was great. Uh, Brandon spent the day with his family, but then he flew in later Aww. that night. We went up to see the lights uh, just up near the mountains, which is not too far. That's about 10 minutes from our house, uh, my mom's house rather. And it was just great to go out in the city and dress up. We went to the symphony one night and went to one of their holiday concerts, walked around downtown. It was great to wear a coat. I know, uh, bundling up. We wear coats a little more uh, there than we do here. But also the thing that trips me out every time I see my nieces and my nephews, I mean, they always say kids grow up so fast, right? Liz and Bella, Bella's my oldest niece. I will never forget the day she was born. She's 13 now. And from the back, I always confuse her for my sister. Check out this well, photo. Well, I mean, who's who? Who's who? Yeah. My sister's on the left. My niece Bella's on the right. So she's sailing past all of us. I think she's going to be the tallest one in the family pretty soon. Oh, my gosh. It's so crazy. And quite honestly, I mean, your sister obviously sees them every day. So and your mom. So it's a little bit harder to notice the change. Right. But you, of course, just see them on FaceTime and n not every day, I would imagine. But you, when you saw them the first time, you thought, who are these people? Every time I see your boys, I can't believe I how, how fast they're growing. How was your holiday? It was really nice. You know, I was nursing the back injury, which is getting better. And uh, the worst part about it is just sitting. Um, so, uh, but you're you know, sitting today on set, though. I am sitting which today. Which didn't happen last week. It did not. I was standing because these stools are. It, it, this position is not great for my back anyway. But these stools are very uncomfortable. But um, today I'm able to do it, so I'm I'm happy for that. Have you ever seen those inversion things that you can? get where you actually sort of like yeah, it makes me very lightheaded you go upside down we could try doing the show that maybe that one day maybe I have a hard enough time just doing it upright <laughs> so you know that's always gonna be interesting but we we spent Thanksgiving with our friends uh, Sarah and Randy and and their family which was really great and Randy is just such a great um, smoker cooker barbecue guy yeah. well there's the boys there's mean. our uh, family photo on Thanksgiving at their house and they had a huge spread lots of family members were there there's Randy you know Randy mm -hmm. he smoked that Wagyu brisket for 18 hours and let me tell you something amazing wow that's a long time yeah there it is there just after it rested for about an hour the turkey was from the rusted 
buckle or rusty buck buckle in New Caney. So good. Sides for everyone. Remember I told you that sitting is like the hardest part. So we ate all their food and then went home for a giant nap, oh. which was really awesome. And then we watched a movie and it was really great. So it was it was lovely. It sounds perfect. And we hope for all of you, uh, it, it was very, very nice. You also had a big milestone over the weekend. We did our sweet Oscar, our pup. Officially is a teenager as well. He turned two on Aww. Saturday. You have two teenagers. Two under the teenagers. Roof. And someone asked me, um, "Is that a sticker, or how did you get him to wear that hat?" No, that that was a real hat. But it was, you know, I'm holding treats. We're yelling his name. He didn't want to wear the hat. He's not like Tex. He doesn't like a lot of props. Oh um, man. But he is. Yeah. Happy birthday to sweet Oscar. Happy birthday, sweet Oscar. And you know, Tex doesn't love wearing any of the any of the birthday I stuff. Do. He kind of bites it off, but he's he's relaxed a bit over the years. So listen, it's Cyber Monday. I know by now it's it's later in the afternoon, so many people have already done their shopping. Yeah. I'll probably do a little tonight, but aren't the deals sort of getting earlier and earlier every single year? Yeah, and I mean, are there really deals? Oh, That's I my think question. So. You I think, think they Yeah, free gift card with purchase or you know, you know I'm a big fan of like Rakuten, right? That's always a great money saver. Yeah. But the thing that is new for me this year, I don't know about y'all, but my phone has been blowing up oh my word. with text messages. I can't you know deal. how a lot of retailers they'll ask for your personal information, like your email, which is one thing, but now a lot of them want your phone. I swear I'm getting so many seven digit phone numbers blown I've, up my phone with the deals. I've opted out of so many things today. Have you? Yes, I have, because every two seconds plus I got a new phone over the weekend because my old phone died and um I feel a sneeze coming on because text. <laughs> I think I have a piece of his fur in my nose. Um, it's okay. You know, I, I've been in this business for how many years? A hundred, and I've You've never, never sneezed, sneezed. But only on this show do I sneeze. Never. <laughs> it it's happens. so weird. You know, um, what? but You're human. I know. Um, I've opted out because I can't deal with all the dings and the dongs and everything that's <laughs> happening on my phone, and I'm thinking it's a, an important, urgent message. No, it's just Cyber Monday. It's Cyber Monday. Brandon said the same thing last night coming home from the airport. He's like, you know what? I have to unsubscribe. Oh, his butt from all of these lists because it is, I mean, even though we're not waiting in lines anymore, some people are, to go into those stores, I, I don't think I saw one video this year of people, no. you know, elbowing their neighbor out of the way to get a $50 television. No, I'm seeing a lot of t TVs out there. But instead our phones are blowing up and that's how they get us. I know, in the moment, you know, sometimes just adding to cart lifts your spirits a little bit. It's true, add to cart and then delete it later. <laughs> all right, well, we have such a fantastic show coming up today, I, I feel like, I mean, is it me or is it getting warmer it's in here? It's a little here? hot in here. Okay, a little hot in her. Oh, what? what is that I see in here? Listen, coming up on today's Houston Life, oh, there these guys are. We're going to meet some of the stars of the 2022 Houston Firefighters calendar. The proceeds benefit such a fantastic cause. And we're going to have all the 411 coming up. The 411, not the 911, including where you can purchase this calendar. Listen, we're so glad to see them back and glad to have you guys in studio as well. We'll have our chat just coming up. Also, still to come. Um, one holiday tradition some Americans say they're going to be skipping this year. What could that be? Mm. I guess we'll find out. But for now, let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who is hanging out at City Place in spring with their sweet holiday themed display. Hey, Lauren. First of all, guys, the one day that I'm not in studio, you have those guys there. It's all right, but this is going to be a beautiful display for lots of families to check out over the next month and a half or so. City Place got a gingerbread village, and I am telling you all about it when Houston Life returns. Well, welcome back to the show. More Americans are planning to skip skip gift buying this holiday season altogether. Done. Altogether, no gifts? No gifts. And this is really interesting. This is a full article um, on odyssey.com. Listen to this. People surveyed 11.5, so almost 12% of people plan to sit out the season by not spending anything on gifts, presents, gift cards, etc. This number is more than ever. And imagine that, right? People are without jobs or making less. So data from the consulting firm Deloitte um, got all of this information. But listen to this. On the flip side, Deloitte also reported that about one third of consumers said they've increased their holiday budgets from what they had planned by 70 percent. And they reported saying that they started holiday shopping by late October. 
Okay, so they've almost doubled their spending. This is what's interesting, too, because we just uh, we were talking last week on the show about how Target will leave its stores closed on Thanksgiving yes. Day. A lot of retailers who have remained closed on the holidays, they've seen bigger numbers in the past couple of years. So I think it's interesting. Maybe more people are just focusing on what's important in life. Not that gifts aren't important, but, you know, human relationships, interaction, or all of those things. We're not going into debt just to buy a present, right? I mean, our financial advisors always say that. And, and what we're dealing with now is that this article basically mentions the tale of two holidays because of the two pandemics, how it affected one maybe differently than your neighbor, right? How maybe someone's life changed dramatically, someone else's didn't. Yeah. And so you're seeing sort of the shift of two different stories, two different outcomes. That's interesting. Yeah, because some people lost their jobs. Other people, because they weren't traveling or eating out, they were able to save a lot of their money. Yeah, it's Nesta. very interesting. We still haven't figured out what we're doing in our family. Family. We just had this conversation too. Are we doing gifts? Are we doing gifts just for the kids? Are we doing homemade gifts? I don't know. Right. But it is stressful, and I don't know. I, I, it's a tradition that I wouldn't mind seeing going away. You know, in my family, so we still buy for the kids, which there's not a ton of kids in our family, but the adults on my side of the family, we do um, a, a pick your name, like a gra we call it a grab bag, even though you kind of give your items what you want. There's a there's a, a dollar amount attached to it. You don't go over it, and that way you're getting at least one thing that you're it's on your list but it's not a massive amount of gifts you know and it's affordable for every single person in the family. Yeah that seems reasonable. Yeah. All right yeah. what do you say we bring in Mr. Joe Sam with today's question of the day. Hey Joe. So you guys you see we do drinking games to get our gifts. Oh. For the adults of course. The wow. Kids buy for the kids. That's I want to go to that party. Well, that's the tradition we're going to keep. <laughs> we'll talk more about that. We want to hear from you guys so what's the tradition you'll be skipping this year and of course we have those traditions coming in that people are going to be passing right up for 2021. Debbie she writes in exchanging presents with my family. You guys just mentioned that we are given a charity instead. Oh, That's love it. yeah, I love that. Good heart. And of course, Samantha, she writes in overspending. That's something that we all would like to stop doing. Mickey writes in caroling, seeing how I can't sing best for everybody. <laughs> yeah, no jingle bells for Mick here. Of course, we head over to our Houston Live Facebook page. Join that conversation. We'll share more of your comments a little later on in the show, Courtney and Derek. You guys can be joining me for drinking games to get your presents or your gifts. I'll do that one, but the caroling, <laughs> I wouldn't mind going away. I remember as a teenager opening the door, like in my underwear, with 10 strangers singing. Get the halls with and it was cold <laughs> outside, and it was awkward, and I didn't want to close the door the on them. The lesson learned, wear pants. <laughs> That's true, right. I was in my own home. Well, answer the door with pants. Are you a fan Speaking of Speaking of, I saw someone in their underpants today uh -oh. on my way to drop off AJ at school. Oh. What do you mean? Like out on the street? Yeah. Came out to like th either Tidy throw some Whitey's trash or, or something. Boxers? It was interesting. Oh, oh. Well, it's a warm day in Houston. <laughs> it was a little chilly. Oh, okay. A little chilly. All, All right, Joe. Road, people. I want more information on the drinking game. Let's I'll talk invite about you it guys later. Over. All right, sounds, <laughs> sounds good. <fun. laughs> All right, tis the season, of course, for all things decorations, right? How about a giant gingerbread house? The second annual gingerbread village at City Place in Spring is a beautiful holiday themed display. Really, the whole family can enjoy it. It is pretty cool. And there's a trail of giant candy canes, lollipops, gumdrops, gingerbread men, of course, and cookie trees that all lead can to we a eat house. Them? Well, no. I don't think you're supposed to. Don't lick the props, people. There is a 16-foot house and a 12-foot tall windmill. Lauren Kelly is there experiencing it firsthand. Lauren, how is it? Hey guys, the one thing that you can't do is lick this. I wouldn't <laughs> recommend eating any of the decorations here, but like you guys mentioned, tis the season. Everybody constantly is asking me, where can I go for the best holiday decorations in town? Spring, right here at City Place. This is the most adorable decoration set I've seen in quite a bit, and she helped put it together. She baked all of these gingerbread herself by hand. This is Amanda Calderon. Thanks for having us out of today. Course. This is the second annual gingerbread village. Now, how did this all kind of come together. It is. Well, last year was the first year that we were able to unveil it to the community, and it was an immediate hit. Um, we got together internally, started brainstorming some ideas, and thought, what is something that we can do that's not a traditional holiday lighting? And we came up with an, a total experiential gingerbread village. It and is, here it is. It's so cute. And as you can see, like, it even has places for people to take family photos over there on the bales of hay. There's the floating Christmas tree, which I don't know if you can see it right now, but at night, it looks even more beautiful all 
lit up, it's right? It's amazing. As well as the Gingerbread Village here is also lit up at nighttime as well. So plenty of opportunities for people to come and visit throughout the day and into the evening as well. So Amanda, how long is this entire setup set up through? So this will be set up running through January 9th. Okay. Um, so plenty of time, even a little bit after the holidays, people can come and visit for the day and through into the evening. As now well. this is not the only piece of festive events happening here at City Place. Correct. What else do you have going on? We have a lot of things going on for the holidays. So City Place is the place to be. Um, we have a, we're kicking off the weekend with our um, ugly sweater holiday stroll, a holiday karaoke. We will have trackless train rides. We'll have breakfast with Santa um, and also our gingerbread jam concert series um, that will feature Grand Old Grizzly as well as People's Choice Band. Also. I'm just like checking off all of these <laughs> things like yes, ugly sweater. Yes, karaoke. Yes, Courtney, I think that you mentioned the drinking games. I think that we could probably have a few adult beverages while we were out here strolling around City Place. Amanda, thank you so much. Of course. Coming up, we're going to chat a little bit more about one of those really fun events happening. It's going to be the Rudolph Ride. It's a bicycle ride. And Derek and Courtney, I've got more information coming up a little bit later on in the show. All right, Lauren, sounds good. We'll see you in just a bit. Well, throughout today's show, we are meeting the firefighters featured in the 2022 Houston Firefighters calendar. And up first... Ari is joining us in studio. Ari, you forgot your shirt, but I guess that's the whole point. <laughs> Welcome to Houston Life. Appreciate it. How y'all doing? We are doing well. It's so great to meet you, Mr. February. I've got your photo right here. Um, you're are you you're a rookie, right, with HFD? Is yes, that right? Yes, ma'am. I made my first year in August. Congratulations. Thank is you. this something that um, you've always wanted to do? Is this kind of the career you always wanted? Uh, yes, I'm always thought about. You always think about the life after football. And my grandma, she did hazmat in Alaska, so. So it was always on my mind. That's pretty cool. So listen, do you work out? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So Ari, Ari is actually a personal trainer at NASA. That's super cool. So are, you're you're training astronauts. So when I tell people that, that's the first thing they always say. They ask me, do, do you train astronauts? Uh, I actually train everybody else. Okay. So the civil servants, the partners, um, family members, retirees. Because the astronauts, they have their own type of equipment that has to be, uh, like, on a, on a ceiling, they might have a treadmill and everything like that. So, because everything's hydraulic, when they're in outer space, they use different equipment. Got it. Right. Got it. It's still really cool, though. Yeah. Okay, so you went to, uh, you played football at HBU, yes, right, which is right around the corner from us. How did the calendar thing happen for you? I mean, it was something like, hey, Ari, you're going to be in the calendar, or how did it come about? So, actually, uh... The EO, the engineer operator at 55, he drives a ladder truck, Chris Wilson, he suggested it to me because we work out every week, and that was something that he always suggested, and going through the academy, exercising, and running every day, they tell you they're going to get you in calendar shape, so... I guess that's what kind of led to that. I, I guess so. Shame. Yeah, it worked yeah. out. So listen, Ari, very important question. Uh, when the phones start ringing and people are calling Channel 2, KPRC 2, asking for your phone number, what should we tell them? <laughs> oh, you put him on the spot, Derek. <laughs> Actually, I think the question, we'll, we'll talk about sorry, this during sorry. commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> don't give your number. Do not yeah, give your do number. Do not give your number oh on TV. Oh, my gosh. Don't listen to him. Mr. February, Ari, it is great to meet you. It's good to meet y'all, too. And thanks for doing the calendar. We're going to get more into the fantastic causes behind it later on in today's show. Absolutely. And thanks for keeping us safe. And uh, we like the picture. Let's just say it. We do. Thank you so much. Well, and a reminder, we are going to meet more of the men you can find on the calendar every single month. We'll be featuring them throughout today's show. Houston Life will be right back. Our Houston firefighters do so much for our city, keeping us safe and also giving back to the community. They sure do. And now their 2022 calendar is back, raising money for their charitable foundation and the Burned Children's Fund. Here with more is Marty Langton, president of the Houston Firefighters Professional Association. Marty, it is so good to have you back on Houston Life. It's been 2017 the last time we had you on. It feels like forever, but uh, we're absolutely proud to be here. Thank you all for having us. This is our first public uh, appearance for the calendar, so it's very exciting that we get to share here with you. We're so glad that you're here and part of this story, of course, the charitable uh, 
component to this calendar, but y'all took a break for several years. It's been since 2017 that you've had the calendar. Um, congratulations on bringing it back, and I would imagine it's not an easy feat to put together. I, I would say that the, all the people that made this happen would tell you that it was absolutely not easy, but it is worth it. And this is something we're proud of. 2017 this is the first time it has been produced. We're excited about it. Uh, you'll see the firefighters throughout the show. Uh, they've done amazing work to get to this point, and it's all for a great cause. Well, the firefighters are such good sports, and I know we like to joke and laugh with them and objectify them uh, for the one time during <laughs> the year, right? It all really is for a fantastic cause. And for people who are unfamiliar, explain how the proceeds are used. Well, the, all the proceeds uh, go to not only the charitable foundation of the association, uh, but we have kind of absorbed as a subsidiary the Houston Firefighter Burn Children's Fund. And and that goes to children who have been burned, garments, uh, prosthesis, different things throughout their life. Uh, that's been there since 1993. And so we're extremely proud to not only bring back the calendar, but to make sure that the proceeds go uh, to help not only firefighters and their families, but the children uh, that are affected by uh, burns. What I think is so remarkable when I first heard about this story uh, many years ago with the calendar is when you all are on a scene, right, and, and you see the fires and, and, and that's the, sort of the last time for these firefighters to have a memory of um, the injuries that happen to these children. This is a way for them many times to reconnect and see how they're doing today. You know, it's not often that firefighters get to see, like you said, after. Uh, we have to go to people on their worst day, right. have to figure out what we're going to do to save them, uh, and then go back and do that about 15 to 16 times a day. Uh, these firefighters, the men and women of the Houston Fire Department, in my opinion, are the bravest uh, men and women I have the pleasure of serving alongside with. And uh, to be able to see uh, and to help families and children that are burned, I think is something that I can't possibly describe, uh, but is something that we get to interact and see those that are affected uh, by terrible tragedies and help them and make it a little bit easier. And in addition to helping the Burn Children's Fund, the HPFFA Charitable Foundation, this has been around for almost 10 years, and this essentially helps firefighters and their families with expenses in case of a disaster, correct? That's right. Not only in case of a disaster, but uh, a traumatic illness, injury, uh, and God forbid, line of duty death uh, or if we have an active firefighter uh, that is struggling or has passed away uh, we're here to help the firefighters we're here to make their jobs easier so they can get out there and serve the citizens of Houston and uh, I'm proud of the work that our board has done with this foundation uh, not only the gala but this uh, producing of this new calendar but Ultimately, we're here, our mission is the men and women and to serve them and to make sure that we can be there when they need to call 911, when they need help. Absolutely, and how can we uh, do this and how can we get the calendar? Because it's available right now. Everybody needs a calendar sure. for next year and these are great gift items too so we can support the cause. Well, you can go on www.houstonsbravest.org right now and you can order the calendar online. Uh, there's a QR code on the back here. I don't know if they can zoom in on it, but I'm told, uh, and I'm not technology <laughs> <laughs> that if you zoom in, you can take a picture with the camera, and that will also take you to uh, the website as well. But uh, we encourage everybody, uh, get it as a stocking supper. Get it because uh, you want to help those in need. But ultimately, this is a good uh, not only event to raise funds, but it's fun for the holidays and it's going to a great cause. Yeah, and it really does make such a great, unexpected, fun gift to open on Christmas morning. Marty Lungton, it's great to see you. It's Thanks good to see you as well. Thank you guys for having us, and we look forward to seeing the rest of them uh, later on in the show. Yeah, we've got yeah. a few more firefighters to meet and figure out what month they're in as well. It's great to see you, Marty, and continued good work, too. Uh, Houston'sBravest.org is the website. There's all the information there on the screen, $25 and then $5 shipping. It's a great gift by multiple, for sure. And more firefighters on the way. But first, let's send it on over to Joe, who has a look at a popular spot for holiday lights. Hi, Joe. Hey, guys. Yeah, something else is great to gift for your family is this here checking out these beautiful holiday lights coming up. I'll tell you exactly where to go in Richmond for a neighborhood light show like none other that will make your holidays a little brighter and we'll get a check of what's coming up for the news at four, including how the White House is decking the halls this year. Houston Life is back in two minutes.
Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Monday at 3.30. Yeah, glad to have you with us. Let's get more of your responses to today's question of the day. We asked, what is a tradition you'll be skipping this year? Christine writes in, instead of exchanging gifts, my fiance and I are going Good. on a seven-day cruise. I love this. Making memories instead of having more stuff. Yeah, because that last year you go, hey, I don't remember what we got each other, right? No. Uh, Isara writes in, I love, love Christmas. I usually go way overboard, over buy, over spend. This year, I want to do a few but meaningful gifts. Also, I usually put up like seven or eight trees. What? But not sure if I have the energy this year. We shall see taking down fall and Thanksgiving <laughs> decor today. I want to come <laughs> over mean, and just hang with you. Most people only have the energy to put up one tree. If that's, that's a lot. All right. There you have it. Anna writes in, hanging with relatives. Again, a reminder, <laughs> things that... <laughs> She Her wants to comment. stop doing hanging with relatives, not because of COVID, but because I can't stand them. Yeah. You know what, Anna? I, I can identify because I like my immediate family, but cousins, and aunts and uncles, I don't know. On Brandon's side, we love them all. On my mom's side, I don't know. I'm just keeping it real. Well, hey, listen, life's too short. Life to spend is with way people too you don't short. Like. Exactly. Yes. Let's check in with Andy, Christine, and Frank for a look what they have coming up at the top of the hour. <laughs> Guys, we love you. We want to hang out with we you. We love you, well, too. Listen, in my defense, when I was younger, Extended family time meant I was getting lectures oh. from uncles yeah. about like how my life had gone wrong and what was I doing yeah. with my life and no. it's just exhausting. You yeah, know? yeah. So that's not fun at all. That's why. Well, and we don't do that, nor do we stay for an extended period of time. That's you know key. what I mean when they overstay their welcome. You're <laughs> oh. like, hey, it's been great to see you, but time to go. Know. <laughs> time to hit the road. <laughs> Hey, you know. Frank is oddly silent. <laughs> Frank's got an evil giggle. Yeah. I know. He didn't have a great holiday. That's all I know. Oh. We had to stop there. I didn't get the full I didn't get the full story there. So maybe that's it was why a holiday. he's been a holiday's quiet. a holiday. Was, yeah. <laughs> Frank, can you get online and tell us? Just leave a Facebook comment. We'll read it. Or give yes. us the clips. Just send him emojis. <laughs> He's just giggling. I know, I know. We'll figure out this story. In the meantime, Frank, since you're being very coy about what your holiday was yes. like, it's a nice start to the week, right? It's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, it was cold this morning. It was 46. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look, it's warmed up under that sunshine to 71, 72, 66 down on the island. High pressure is in control all week long. So I don't think we're going to see a lot of changes. If anything, we're going to have to watch for more fog developing overnight because of that warm air that's going to be uh, moving in. As far as the weekend, that's when things get a little soupy. So oh. I know I'll have the full 10 day coming up at Friday and Saturday and even Sunday. A little bit of rain is in the forecast. Hanukkah started last night. Tonight, 68 at 6, 63 at 7, and then 60 and 58. Just a beautiful evening. In fact, the next three days, you'll notice a warming trend Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, even into Friday as we head into the first days of December. So we'll talk more about this work week warm up. Patchy dance fog and changes next weekend. That's coming up oh at 4 o'clock. We're already to December almost. Uh, this, like two days. This year yeah. is flying. <laughs> it's pretty unbelievable. Frank, thank you. We'll talk to you in a bit, sir. All right, and here's a look at some of the other stories we're covering for you at 4 o'clock today. It is the newest variant of the coronavirus. Today, local doctors are talking about the Omicron variant. They talk about their concerns and they're talking about what we should prepare for with this variant. Plus, it was a website started as a joke, but now rent Rentahitman.com is helping catch actual criminals. How the site is now working with law enforcement to keep crime from happening. And it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas in D.C. We're going to show you this year's Christmas decorations at the White House. Much more coming up at 4 o'clock today. We'll see you guys then. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, seven or eight trees, I guess, in the White House. You know, they have a bunch. They got room for that. Yeah. Sure. yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you in a bit. Frank, still want that story. Yeah. Call me later, okay? That's so hey, curious. We went to zoo lights last night. It was terrific. Oh, I can't oh, wait. So yeah. if you haven't been, you really should do that. Definitely really need nice. to do that. Yep. Okay. All right, Franklin. Well, too. Thanks, see you guys. Soon. Okay, so all show long, we are meeting some of the men being featured in the Houston Firefighters calendar. It's back now. Since 2017, and now we have Mr. December in studio. What's up, Kyle? How's it going? Good. How are you? Very good. Good. Being shirtless on television, <laughs> listen, takes a lot of courage. You look fantastic. The calendar spread looks great. So you're originally from New Jersey, but you've been in Houston six years. Yep. Here's the thing about Kyle, too. So you knew you always wanted to be a firefighter. Did you ever imagine that you would be shirtless appearing in a firefighter calendar? 
No, no, I did not. <laughs> or shirtless on live yeah. television. <laughs> New one. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about the calendar for real. So uh, the auditions, we understand that people were, there was lots of submissions this year, obviously only 12 spots. Why did this appeal to you? I wanted to try something new, get out of my comfort zone and help more people, help the foundation, yeah. help the children. And what also I think is really fascinating about you, you have a master's degree in public administration and you also are a commercial drone pilot. You know. Essentially, getting your, your drone license is like getting your pilot's license, right? Uh, not quite up there, but it does take some time, some studying, and some, some studying. practice. You gotta pass a test by the FAA. Well, yeah, there's lots of rules, right? Yeah, there's there's a lot of regulations, you can't just... rules. Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about your daily. Uh, did you get a lot of, uh, you know, what's like the word on the street from the rest of the guys at the station? Yeah, what right? are people saying? <laughs> I mean, do they give you a lot of like, hey, Mr. December? Yeah, I get that quite a bit around my station. We're kind of a busy station, so we don't really have a whole lot of time to work out at the station. So really kind of get a workout at the fires and on my off days. Well, so on your off days then, this was serious business too, because to get in shape, I imagine you were in shape before the calendar, but it takes a lot of work to look this good, right? Yeah, yeah, about three to four hours at the gym every single day, dieting. Three to four hours a day, Kyle. No cookies, no donuts. Nothing. Oh man. Well, oh, listen. Guess the anchor calendar is out for us. <laughs> we will not be doing the anchor calendar. Kyle, you look fantastic. Thanks so much for doing this and for helping out. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks I'll, for keeping us safe too. Help you sell all the calendars. All right. Shifting gears now. There are so many places to see holiday lights in the Houston area, but there's no place quite like Pecan Grove. It sounds real sweet, doesn't it? Joe Sam headed there to experience this holiday tradition for himself and I know you loved it. Oh yeah, Courtney, you said it perfectly. It is sweet and you can see most of that all throughout this month. There's been, this has been actually a tradition for residents of Pecan Grove for many years and families from around Houston flock to this magical neighborhood for their light display that has now turned into a friendly competition. Check it out. Old, my family would take me to Pecan Grove uh, every year. It was a tradition. It was like clockwork the week before Christmas. We'd get on my dad's truck and we drive around the neighborhood. And I remember every year it just felt such like home. It felt it was a, became a very big family tradition in our family. Yes, it's it's been about about 18 years coming to Pecan Grove, looking at the Christmas lights, and my little my daughter, my, just my oldest daughter Emily, and we just fell in love with it. We never missed a December. We always came in December to see the lights. I remember when my dad would take us, we would always say that one day, you know, if you work hard enough, if you go to school, go to college, and and focus on your grades, that you can live here one day. Well, apparently, <laughs> four months ago, we're here. You know that. You know we just got a good deal on the house. And when we, I told my wife, she can tell you when we signed the papers. I, I was in tears because I was like, yes, we won the lottery. We're actually here. You know, it's like a dream came true. I think the decorations are amazing. We've been working on them since July. In fact, even before we closed on the house, we were already drawing up blueprints and figuring out what was going to go where. And every weekend, we're working on some new project. And I think in the end, it came out to be really great. <laughs> Now, of course, you guys, if you would like to see the lights yourself, you can find them located at FM 359 and Highway 90 for some other popular areas to check out for the holiday lights there. I'll have a list on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now, this is so incredible because you can drive in the neighborhood and yeah. there's a Facebook page that you can head on there, the Pecan Grove Facebook page. You can vote on which house you think is the best for holiday lights. It's a little friendly competition and this year's theme is Heavens. So they have oh. lights and angels and stars all over. Don't they also do great. hayrides out there? Joe? Yes, hay rides. They do that as well. And of course, this year is going to be a competition between the cul de sacs and the streets. Oh, so, I love that. I'll Some serious comp <laughs> going on there. And I love that family that you interviewed. They're like, you know what? We've wanted to live here our whole lives, and here mm -hmm. we are. It was sort of that pinch me moment. But that is just such an incredible, touching story, especially this time of year. All because of the lights just drew a whole family. I believe there, it. And yep. they purchased the house and lived happily ever after. I love it. Well, and we also <laughs> want to know your suggestions. If there's a part of town, anywhere it is, 
please let us know because we want to come out or send a camera crew yeah. and capture the magic. I know. I'm ready for it. You know, I love holiday lights. I know you so do. So I can't get. I can't wait for it. Fantastic. Well, great story, Joe. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Coming up, a heartwarming mission to help local children get new winter coats and shoes. How you can help? That's when Houston Life returns right after this. Here in Houston, we are so lucky to have warm weather for most of the year, but when temperatures drop, many kids are unprepared for the frosty air. Luckily, one nonprofit is working to help fill this need for winter wear in a truly heartwarming way. I was first connected with Operation Warm through my wraparound specialist. We've had a few cool days here in Houston, and we noticed that a lot of our students did not have the appropriate attire. Uh, for the weather, and so she connected us with Operation Warm to ensure that our students would receive jackets or coats to be prepared for the winter. Operation Warm is a national nonprofit. We manufacture new winter coats and athletic shoes for children in underserved populations. On our uh, website, we have um, a wish list. And believe it or not, the city that we have the most requests from is the city of Houston. We have over 24,000 requests for coats this year, just in the city of Houston alone. I do think people would be surprised because we're not considered a cold city or a cold state, uh, but the need is there and it has become greater because of the pandemic. The cold in Houston kind of catches people by surprise. And and having a winter coat may not be one of the first things on their list, but is, is very much needed. So on November 9th, we did host a huge parade with Operation Warm and FedEx right here at Frost in front of our school. FedEx is a great partner of ours. This month, they provided 500 coats to Frost Elementary School in a exciting parade style fashion delivery. Houston is one of 30 markets this year um, across, the, across North America that they will serve with new winter coats. Um, and it was, a, it was a great celebration. So the parade was very exciting. There was a lot of cheering and clapping, just an exciting time uh, for the kids, even before they received the coats. A lot of our students don't have the things that they need, uh, like a coat for the winter. So I know the community that I serve, the families that I serve, greatly appreciate whatever donations they can receive to improve their lives. You know, something that for most of us, you know, we go to our closet in the morning and pick out a jacket, um, but to see that kind of excitement on a child's face is, you know, really um, why we do what we do. Wow, that is incredible. It's such a basic thing that so many people don't think about winter wear. Absolutely, and you know, in our part of the country, right? I mean, there are times when we have a winter where the weather really isn't affecting us. As we saw today, it was 47 degrees. We don't normally have heavy coats, so these kids, they need it. Yeah, and tomorrow is Giving Tuesday. Just throwing that out there. If you would like more information on Operation Warm or to find out how you can help a family in need, you can visit their website, operationwarm.org. Every little bit helps for sure. All right, let's check in with Lauren Kelly, who has a tasty holiday activity for the whole family. This is so pretty, Lauren. This is so cute, you guys. It's the Gingerbread Village experience here at City Place. And coming up, we're talking about a really fun reindeer-involved Rudolph event that's going to be happening here in the next couple of weekends. We'll talk about how you can get involved right here at City Place when Houston Life returns.
at this. This is so adorable. Out here at City Place in spring, this is the gingerbread village experience. It's totally free. It's great for the entire family. And if you're looking for something different to do this holiday season through January the 9th, you can come out here, take all the photos you want to. And what's even cooler is it looks even more beautiful at night because all of this is lit up. And even that Christmas tree that is floating right over there in that beautiful pond, that lights up as well. But there's a really fun event that's going to happen. It's the first ever Rudolph ride that is Saturday, December the 18th. And Evan, you are here to tell us more about the upcoming event. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so the 18th of, of December at 10 a.m., we're going to meet at the Star Cinema Grill uh, parking lot. Where and that's just right around the corner, right over here in this yeah, area. Yeah, just okay. really close. And we invite, we're just going to do a fun family ride, invite everyone to come out and uh, to decorate their bikes. I I was going to say, this bike is definitely very beautifully decorated for the holidays, and I noticed that you have on your, your holiday sweater as well with the bike on it. Are you encouraging people to wear a costume and dress up? Yes, you can because you have the opportunity to win some prizes uh, for the best decorated bike or the best decorated costume. So, like, other than the bow and stuff, what kind of decorations do you recommend <laughs> for a bike? Maybe some bells and Maybe things? some bells, some lights. Well, it'll be the daytime, but whatever they feel inspired to do with their bike. Let's talk about this route. How long of a route is this bike? It's it's not very long. It'll probably be a mile or two. Uh, family friendly for anyone that wants to come out and just to kind of explore city place and its bike friendly uh, area. You know what we were talking about a little while ago is this place is full of bike trails and it's all over. I mean miles and miles right? You guys are going to just going to be going in and out of those? Yes we will. Yeah it actually goes through the city and then it connects to the Spring Creek Greenway Trail which that's one of the largest urban forested greenway in the in the country and so uh, we're actually going to connect over there and then come back it's so wonderful. Evan, mm -hmm. thank you so much. I'll probably be out here for that bike ride, but I need to get okay. a new bike, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. If you guys want all the information on either the City Place Gingerbread Village or this Rudolph ride on Saturday, December 18th, I've got a link up at HoustonLife.tv. Anyways, it's tons of fun, and it's so much fun for the entire family, especially if you're looking to take some holiday photos. I do it right here. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys in the studio. It is picture perfect, and you are there on a picture perfect day as well, Lauren. Thanks so much. Super fun out in <laughs> spring. You. And that gingerbread, man looked so sad but cute as well. Well, listen, during today's show, we have been meeting some of the firefighters featured in this year's, well, actually next year's, the 2022 Houston Firefighter Calendar, all for a good cause. That is right. And joining us now, we have Mr. July, who's a Houston native. Welcome, Marquis. It's great to see you. Good to be here. Glad that you're here with a crutch. We just, you know, we're sharing our, our injuries. That's okay. Um, you've been a firefighter for six years, grew up in Houston. Um, besides fighting fires, you also have another passion of yours. Tell us about that. Yes, I'm a playwright. Fantastic. And one of your plays is being staged right now? Yes, it's being staged at the Deluxe Theater in Fifth Ward. That is fantastic. That's where I grew up. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. And you're at Station 25 and 3rd Ward? Station 25, yes, sir. All right. All, uh, all in the vicinity, right? So super cool. You spend time writing as well. There is your mugshot right there. You look fantastic. Talk about this process because during, during the commercial break, we were chatting about the audition process. How does it all work? You just go in and take your shirt off? Well, <laughs> I was introduced to the calendar when I went to go buy a hat at the Union. And they asked me to audition Captain Gabriel Dominguez. He worked at the station that I worked at. And immediately, you know, I had to take my shirt off, so they took me how I was. And, you know, I wasn't nervous about it because I had already started a nutrition diet. I already started working out, but I wasn't where I needed to be. Okay. So that picture was a lot of workout and sweating. You look fantastic. Oh, thank Tip you. top you shape great. for sure. Nutrition is is kind of a, a passion of yours now. Yes. What yes. else do you do? What else what kind of workouts do you do? Well, besides the actual job. Well, I like pushing the sled a lot. Oh, pushing I like that one too. On the sled, it's a full body workout. And like I say, with the nutrition, just being a firefighter, going to different people's homes and seeing the kind of sicknesses they deal with. And, and, you know, family as well. I wanted to do something different, so the calendar just came at the right time. And there was a slight injury. Uh, Marquise was telling us he was oiling up his body for the shoot. And <laughs> I don't think he wanted you, you to tell everyone. You just everyone. fell down. You just fell down, right? I, I feel, I feel I had to 
go and get some stitches in my knee. <laughs> well, listen, we hope you, you mend very quickly. It's great to meet you, Marquise. Yes. And again, if you would like to order the Houston Firefighter Calendar for 2022, the website to visit is houstonsbravest.org. Just 25 bucks plus five bucks for shipping, and it all goes to support some pretty incredible causes. Marquise, and to all of our firefighters, thanks once again for stopping by. Oh, thanks for having me. Happy holidays. Happy yeah, Mr. and December. heal up soon. I Be know. careful the next time you're oiling yourself up, all right? <laughs> all right, after the break, a look at what is coming up on tomorrow's show, including getting your home ready for the holidays. And as we had to break, let's check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on entertainment tonight, including some drama from the royal family. Hi, Kevin. Marquise, Derek, and Courtney tune into ET tonight for royal bombshells. Which family member made comments about Harry and Meghan's son Archie's skin tone? The author of a controversial new book tells all. It's an ET exclusive. That's tonight at 6:30 right here on KPRC2. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Life, from how to pick them from the grocery store to how to properly care for them, we're getting a crash course on poinsettias. I like saying that, poinsettias. Also, mm -hmm. learn how to take the guilt out of those holiday sweets. We're talking to the family behind Kai's Baking Studio for some keto-friendly and gluten-free gourmet treats to keep that holiday eating oh, yum. rolling right along. Looks good. And the uh, poinsettias, too. Beautiful. So pretty. I love the white ones, too, or the marbled ones mm -hmm. or pink. Let's get a final look at what you had to say about our question of the day. We asked, what's a tradition you're going to be skipping this year? Leslie writes in, skipping Xmas at home with the whole fam, packing up and heading to Colorado for a white Christmas. Oh, that sounds lovely. It's so funny how many Houstonians spend time in Colorado. A ton. I know. It is, but it's good. Get some snow out there. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us today on Houston Life. Again, that firefighter calendar, Houston'sBravest.org, if you want to purchase yours. We're going to send it over to Andy and Christine now. Yeah, such a great call. It's great to see you guys on a Monday. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right.